Welcome to the Church of Thomas. A Spiritual Kinship, 12907. I have always been drawn to stories of good versus evil. They are written in the form or style of fantasy or science fiction. As a child, I loved Lion, Witch, and Wardrobe. When I was a young teenager, I discovered Tolkien. Lord of the Rings trilogy was and still is one of my favorites. I reread them about every 10 years or so. It was fascinating to find new meanings as time passes. It is wonderful to see them develop with me through my life experiences. There are also movies that fall into this category. My favorite of them is Lady Hawk. This is a story of true love ripped asunder by a bishop who practices sorcery. He curses them to be together, yet always separate. She is a beautiful hawk by day and human by night. Her beloved is a wolf by night and a man by day. The bishop chose these forms because they are two animals that mate for life. So neither could find it in their natures to find a different mate. Though they travel together, they remain unaware of their other lives. Unfortunately, there are fewer stories of good versus evil in real life. Life is very complicated. There's a wide range of shades of gray. To find a villain and a hero that personifies the essence of evil and good uh, in the same uh, real life story is so rare as to be unheard of. Very seldom is there a hero or heroine who is the epitome of good. When we look at the people who do evil in the world, that person is seldom someone who is totally alien to us. We may see a background that is filled with pain. We may still want to punish these people, but there is often a very human side to them. We flinch when we wonder how we would have reacted in their shoes. People need there to be examples of clear choices. They need a black and white tablet to delineate their own moral compasses. In literature, we want our heroes to be very good. We want our bad guys to be very bad. It is okay for the heroes to have small human flaws, but they have to be minor. Our bad guys have to be rotten to the core, even if there might be a shred of humanity still clinging to their desperate souls. One author has, that has gone outside of the normal style for good versus evil is Stephen King. Most of the books he has written are not classic good versus evil. Uh, there is one outstanding exception. The title is The Stand. I highly recommend it if you have not read the uncut version. The characters are more in line with both classical Greek heroes as well as the modern anti-hero. In The Stand, a human engineered flu is accidentally let loose. It kills 99.99% .99 of the population of the world. The remnants are from every walk of life and background. There is an antichrist figure that rises to consolidate the people who are evil or weak and drawn to evil. There is a group of basically good people that start dreaming about an old black woman who sings and plays guitar. She is in a cabin in a field of tall corn in Nebraska. She, she tells them to come and see her as soon as possible. The good folks need to make a stand against the evil black man. God had told her to gather these people. She was told to keep the non-tech way she grew up with long before the flu. Her dreams were very vivid of what must be done. The old black woman was called Mother Abigail. She was 107 years old. She plays a guitar with arthritic but inspired hands. This character strikes a very deep chord with me. I feel her pain. I feel her fear and uncertainty. I feel her faith and resolve. She asks God many times that if it can be done to let it not, uh, that she not have to drink from the cup that is held out to her. As time passes, she does take the cup. She does not feel up to the battle ahead even though she knows that is why she has lived so long. She has outlived her husband. She has outlived every single child she gave birth to. Her most often closing of her talks with God is, Thy will be done. She sees that people uh, she has called are coming to her. They all thought that she was a figment of their imagination until they started comparing dreams as they met up with each other on the road. These people also had dreams of terror 
where the black man confronts them with their deepest fears and flaws. When Mother Abigail has dreams of this figure, it is focused on stopping her mission. She wonders how she can be strong against such a powering, overpowering evil set against her. She wants to greet her guests with a feast. Living alone, she has few fresh foods to offer. After fighting her frail body to get to a neighbor's home up the road, she slaughters some chickens for the feast. With a lot of persistence, she gets the job done. On her way back with the clean chickens in her gunny sack, she is set upon by a massive, uncanny number of weasels. She is very afraid of being torn to pieces if she does not use the chickens to draw them away from her. At the last minute, she prays for protection from God. A firm resolve settles over her, strengthening her. Her faith saves her. It was an illusion that had threatened her. They evaporate into the night like her worst nightmare. She had been viciously, viciously attacked by a weasel uh, as a child, and her family had feared that it was rabbit when she had been bitten back then. Because of her successful dispelling of the illusion, she was marked. The black man became aware of her opposition after she stood her ground. He did not know how strong in her faith she was until she called on God to save her. This painted a huge target on her that came from her trust in God. The black man would try to find her quickly since she represented the leadership of the God-drawn people. Some of the strongest of the good people are not even sure there is a God. One of them was Nick. He could not speak or hear. He suggests that the dreams with the black man are a collective human evil of the world. Nick is not happy about it, but comes to believe the black man is a real person who wants to hurt them. One of my favorite dialogues is between the two of them. Nick says, I'll do it, but I do not believe in God. Mother Abigail responds with a chuckle. It's okay, Nick. God believes in you. To do as God asks, she will have to have every, leave everything she knows and loves behind. Like Moses, she understands that answering God's call means dying among strangers she is preparing this feast for. She prepares to do battle with the representative of Satan. There are two verses in the Reconciler Gospel of Thomas that are echoed, echoed in New Testament verses that speaks to the, this acceptance of missions placed upon you by God. Protection comes with the target you place on yourself by fighting evil in the world. Reconciler Gospel of Thomas, verse 32. Jesus said, A city built on a high mountain, fortified, will not fall, but it can also not be hidden. To do the right thing, you earn the protecting love, but the visibility makes you a target. Reconciler Gospel of Thomas, verse 33. Share from the rooftops what I will tell you. Remember what I say in the right ear, but also hear me with your left ear. No one can be a light in the darkness without trying to share that illumination. Everyone who enters this person's presence will see their light. Not acting on truth gives consent to the lies. Your silence will not shield you. God bless the whole world. No exceptions.